If you spend hours sitting and not getting up frequently, then it creates this dead butt syndrome. Hi, my name is Annie and welcome to my channel, Annie Pilates Physical Therapist. I'll be discussing about dead butt syndrome or DBS, the anatomy and physiology of the muscles being affected, the inflammation as well as the tightness on certain muscle groups such as your hip flexors and then the lengthened gluteus medius that causes imbalance, gait abnormalities, poor posture, and pain on your back, hips, all the way to your knees. That feels like a sciatica even though it's not. So get your mat ready and join me. So let's discuss about DBS or dead butt syndrome. It's also called the forgotten glutes muscle or amnesia on your glutes. It's interesting how this is happening since COVID-19 and it's actually in the news right now because more and more people are working from home it causes inflammation on your gluteal muscles. The most common muscle out of the three muscles of the glutes, there's the max, medius, and minimus. The gluteal medius is the most affected due to the fact that it helps stabilize your pelvis and it also stabilizes the hip joint. So if you've been sitting a lot, it causes the gluteal muscles to lengthen, which should not be the proper position. So your pelvis change position and then your hip flexors get tight. If you want to learn more about your iliopsoas, which is the main primal mover of your hip flexors, check out the link down below so you learn more about how to stretch it and strengthen it at the same time. Just because it's tight doesn't mean it's strong. It's also possible it's very weak. So it's important to strengthen the hip flexors at the same time stretch it. Then the gluteal muscles. Because there's three of them, you want to isolate the gluteal medius. And if you want to do a separate video, I have a very nice video talking about the gluteal medius on how to strengthen it isolating these muscles. So in this video, I'll be combining the gluteus medius strengthening and the iliopsoas muscles. At the same time, how to relieve the inflammation of the gluteus medius insertion, the tendon gets really inflamed on DBS, which means it causes bursitis. So the hip becomes inflamed. At the same time, the insertion on your femur bone gets really tender and inflamed. So it's called gluteal medius tendinopathy. So it's, you've heard about inflammation on the tendon. Doesn't mean it's just inflamed. It's also degeneration and it's causing wear and tear. So you can actually pull it and strain your gluteus medius if you don't start fixing this problem. Interestingly enough, the gluteal medius muscle is very important for running. So for those who are working at home and they started running, then they started noticing pain on their hips. Because of sitting for a prolonged period of time, the proper biomechanics of running became different. Because of this DBS syndrome, it causes this pelvic misalignment. So you find one-sided lower, or you might find it difficult to lie on the side of injury, especially the insertion of the gluteal medius muscle. Then you might know if you're diagnosing yourself if you have this. Of course, my best recommendation is to see your specialist, your doctor, and your sports medicine specialist. If you're a runner, and if you're not a runner, and you want to be diagnosed, then see your local physical therapist. But if you don't have time and financial resources and you want to try this program it's so gentle enough that you can try this at home you can place some ice and heat before you start this program so that it's not too much pain doing the simple deep activating pilates movement in order to connect from your mind body awareness because of the atrophy and amnesia of the muscles you just can't do squats because if you do a high impact movements you might strain the muscle so my best recommendation is to really connect to your gluteal medius muscles and your hip flexor. Dead butt syndrome also causes some sciatica-like symptom, even though it's not a sciatica. Because once you start walking, one side is weaker, you might start twisting your spine and then it starts a compensation of movement all the way to your knees and ankle. So you want to make sure you're not having sciatica before doing this program. Because this program is for dead butt syndrome for those with weak glutes and hip flexors and then you're just experiencing radiating pain 
or pain that from the joints because of compensation. So let's start performing our exercise. The first one we're going to do is lying on your stomach. So when you're lying in your stomach, you can really isolate your glutes muscles. You can also do the gluteal squeezes exercises in sitting and standing. But once you're in your stomach area, your muscles are against gravity. So it's actually more challenging. With your head down, you can start squeezing it and pulling your belly button in and squeezing your knees and feet together. As you inhale, squeeze in. As you exhale, relax. My best recommendation is to squeeze. For beginners, three to five seconds hold and then slowly progress to 10 seconds hold as you get stronger. So as you inhale, squeeze and then pull your belly button in. Try to do some kegels to help activate your glutes more and the overall core strength. So as you inhale, squeeze, hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, as you exhale, relax. <sighs> Inhale. And then squeeze as hard as you can. And then blow through your mouth to relax more. Inhale, squeeze. And do that 10 times. The next exercise is do hamstring curls. Even though you're doing your hamstrings, it helps your glutes muscles. Inhale. And then exhale down. So if your problem side is your left, do that 10 times. And I want you to hold it up to 5 seconds hold. And gently progress to 10 seconds hold. As you inhale and exhale, you can also lower your head down and rest. Or on your sphinx position to stretch your low back. The third exercise to activate your goose muscles is to gently lift your knee up so you might find it difficult to lift so this is the third progression most of my patients with dbs they really had difficulty lifting their knee off the mat so the best way to remind yourself because most of them are just bending their knee and lifting their foot is to really imagine lift your knee off the mat knee straight up foot up and then they could activate it they might struggle and then plop down so it's really weak, so they just lift and then drop. And that's fine. But if it's too difficult and causes pain, stop. Continue the squeezes first, and you will see progress in two weeks of doing this. Every single day, if you can do two to three times a day, then you will see faster results. To really connect from your mind, body, awareness, all the way to your glutes. The fourth progression is bending your knee again to hamstring curls. And this is really difficult to lift your knee with your toe pointing to the ceiling to activate your glutes. Inhale and lift. So after doing those four exercises, now we can progress. And then we're going to slowly lie on your back to activate utilizing bridging technique so bridging is usually very difficult with dps so make sure your hands are on your side knees bent to 90 hips and knees are level and when you lift you really want to pull your belly button in to activate your core muscles and gently with the help of your hands to lift your glutes squeeze as hard as you can and if it's okay you can do it today you can always progress next time so you will see results in two weeks that you can slowly bridge as long as there's no increasing pain. And as I said earlier, play some heat for at least 20 minutes on your area where there's pain. So it's not too difficult to move because you're going to have some tightness and weakness. So do that 10 times. And then to progress, there's more glutes exercises that I can show you. If you leave a comment down below, then I can show you the next progression for this DBS syndrome. So the next one, as I said earlier, um, your iliosovas are going to be very tight at the same time weak. So it's best to strengthen first before you stretch it. So with one knee bent to support your back, straight leg raise. Start on your knee level for beginners. Do that, hold it for 2 seconds, hold, gently progress to 10 seconds, hold 10 times and then you can challenge it 
to 90 degrees with your knee lock to activate your hip flexors more, your iliopsoas. But you want to make sure you're not straining your back. So do it gently. If your knees are buckled, that's fine. And it will get better as we progress. Lastly, you want to stretch your hamstrings with your knees straight. If you can't reach your hamstrings behind your thigh to hold on, you can use a belt or a roll towel and pull your foot up on the arch of your foot. Keep your knees straight and stretch your hamstrings because they get really tight on prolonged sitting. So pull it gently, hold that for 30 seconds hold. For beginners, 10 seconds hold 10 times and then gentle progress to 30 seconds hold 10 times as you get better, stronger and more flexible. And then lastly, you want to stretch your hip flexors and you can do it in kneeling position. The left, lean towards the right more forward. Lean on your right, hold on to your right knee and hold that for 30 seconds. Hold, feel that lovely stretch and gently progress by leaning forward and then slowly twisting to the left to open your hip flexors more, targeting your psoas minor as well. Because there's iliopsoas are combined of the rachus and psoas major, but don't forget the minor as well. Those are the demonstration to target your DBS and there's more progression. If you love this video and you find value on my Pilates physical therapy, yoga, health and wellness, so you won't miss anything. If you want to do a follow along video for this program, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to do it for you. Message me if you have any questions, suggestions or concerns or directly on my comment section. Always remember, be safe, be well and healthy you. See you in my next video.